Podcasters are a playlist player, from which we can run 24 by 7 news channels, entertainment channels, infotainment channels. The special thing is that we can run both play out and CG from the same machine. Its user interface is so easy that anyone can easily work on it. It shows a digital preview of both playlists and playing files. In this we can record both play out and live in jest. We can play live streams. Play out can be streamed on the internet. There are four methods to run graphics. By which we can also display the graphics on the permanent. Can also run according to time. And can also run in a loop. On the screen simultaneously we can display graphics from all methods. In this you can display the L-band graphics in any position. Now I will tell you how to work on Aircaster software. Dashboard. Playing file position. Here, we see how much time the videos have played. Playing file remaining. Here, we will see the remaining time of currently playing file. Playing file duration. It will show the total duration of the playing video file. Playlist position. Here, it will show the position of current file from playlist. Playlist remaining. Here, it shows how much files are left to be played in playlist. Playlist duration. And here it shows the total duration of the playlist. This is a system clock. It shows the end time and date of the playlist. It looks like how many files are there in the playlist. Playing file, here is the name of the video file that is currently running. Next file, here the name of the file which will run after it. Playlist, here is the names of the playlist files that is currently running. Aspect ratio, by enabling this button. The video size adjusts automatically on the playout. Squeeze to L-band, by enabling this button, the L-band graphics created by Titlecaster can be run by the time play graphics, start with Windows, by enabling this button, the software can be started with Windows as well, countdown to any file can be shown by enabling this button. full screen, after pressing this button, preview window comes to full page. Virtual source, by activating this button, the third party software can use the playout as an input. Playout controls, from here, you can lock and unlock the control of the playout. Keyboard shortcuts, from here, the keyboard control can lock and unlock. From here we will set up the input device. After clicking on it the list will open and select the input device from this list. From here we will set the video source. We will select any source from which we will set the list. From here we will set the resolution of the live input. From here we will set the audio input. From here you will set the audio input channel and bitrate. After configuring the input device, click on the Get Live button to initialize. Use Stop Live button to stop input feed. Live duration are set here. Use this button to add live into playlists. This button is used to get live immediately on a playout. Here it show playing file remaining counter. I will tell you about the file editor. File editor is basically used to trim the file and if we want to locate break in file then it is used. There are two ways to add file. One is, send the file from playlist to the file editor or if we want to edit file at our own and then want to add file so for this we use browse button to add file. Now we add any file from here and it is added from outside and if we want to insert breaks then we click on this button and we point the cursor at that position where we want a break and pause video and insert break.
so the brake is inserted at that position. Now if we want to insert another brake then we again do the same thing. Now after doing this we come to know that if we want to add brake in any file at any position then we can do this in file editor. If we want to add this file in playlist then we click on add to list button and we select file in playlist below which we want our file to be added. Now a file name add dot is added and in break option, we can see the count is 2 which means 2 breaks are added. Now if we want to edit file loaded in playlist then we will select the file and by using edit file button we load file here. It is pause button, this is stop button, and this is previous frame button mean to take frame backward and next is next frame button to take frame forward. This is start mark button and this is end mark button. If we want trimmed video back in original form then we will click on reset mark button. Apply change button is used to enable effect after file is modified. Now given is blank clip, if we want to add any blank clip to manage our playlist then we can make it here for any number of hours, minute and seconds as per need. Then we select file under which we want this file then we click on insert blank clip button. For removing any file from file editor, a remove file button is given. Now if we want to insert pause in between our file then we will set time for how much time we need pause and click on insert pause button. Now there is an option start mark. When we trim our video at start time is shown here and next is end mark shows the end time of file. Trim duration showing the time duration of file after trimming. Next is file duration shows the actual file duration and next is file position, shows files positon. There is an option given for enabling audio. If we want to know which break is at which position, we set here, suppose this file add dot, we do edit selected file, now this will which break is at which position. In this way we can trim our video accordingly in file editor and according to us at which position on timeline we want insert break can also be done here. In the video output we configure the playout device. Here we can send the same output to the maximum 4 devices. Here we see the installed devices. Just as the device which is currently installed is the Intensity Pro 4K card. From here, you will set output source here. The setting of the keying will be enabled here. And will set up keying source here. Playout is on air from here. Here sets the video out scaling mode. From here to sets video interlacing mode on the playout. Here the resolution of the playout is set. And here the playout audio channels are set up. This device has a reloading button. It has buttons to enable the 4K output. This is the button to adjust the CG thread auto. This button is given as on and off the order of the CG layer. Similarly, other devices can also configure. This feature is used to record and stream from the playout. Only one feature can be used at time. At first I will tell how to record the playout. Formats, will set the format in which to record. For example I have set MOV, QuickTime Player. From here you will set up the video codec like MPEG-4 Part 2 video. And here's the audio codec like AAC. Now you will set the video bitrate from here like 2.5 megabytes. And audio bitrate from here like 128k and then save it. From source, we will set that we have to record playout or live input. To start recording, click the start button. The software asks us for the path to save the recording file. We type the file name and save it. And now we see that the recording starts, whose information we see in the green color area. And click the stop button to stop recording. For streaming, we will also set format, video codec, audio codec, 
and video bitrate and audio bitrate in a similar manner. Like we selected in the format UDP streaming and video codec in MPEG-2 and audio codec in MP3. And after that we will type the streaming URL here. And now we will type the username and password and stream name which provides us third-party streaming server. After that, we will click on the start button to turn on streaming. And now we see that the streaming starts, whose information we see in the green color area. And now we check in stream play whether it is streaming or not. Click the stop button to stop streaming. The stream play feature is used to play any network URL like RTMP, UDP, MMS, RTSP and YouTube. Simply type the URL in the box given here or paste it. And then save it. Now click on the play button to check the preview. Use this button to add it to the playlist. This feature is used to differentiate files in playlists. For example which file are of promos and which files are of news and which file are of advertisement etc. This is the file type that we create here. To create a new file type, we will click on the new button. Now we will type the name here. And from here, we will set its color. And then we'll save it. Now whatever graphics we have on this file type will enable its checkbox. And then we'll save it. So the file type is created in this way. From here it is set to specify which type they are set in default. To set any type to default, enable its checkbox. This button is used to delete the file type. This means if you enable this, then whenever you add a file, the software will ask you to file type. Compositions of infographics that are automatically displayed by the software are linked here. Its display timing and duration is also set here. Whether it is to show it or not, it is also set from here. These graphics are created by the title caster. So first gave now and next info. Now info, the graphical information shown on the file that is currently running. Next info. The graphical information show of the file that will run after it appears. These are the info on and off buttons. From here we decide that how many seconds run of the file should be an infographics show. From here we decide how many seconds before the file ends, should be an infographics show. The composition is removed using this button. From here we set up the duration of the infographics. Compositions are added using this button. The composition text is linked to these buttons. Now I am telling you how to add composition and link text file from here. Please see this. Breaks back in info. This infographics is shown when commercial advertisements are running. This info shows how long will it take to come back on video after commercial advertisement. If we have to run the counter of the total duration of commercial advertisement, the counter running in info, then we will keep this condition enabled. And if you have to show a few seconds before the end of the advertisement then this condition will be disabled. And here. We will set the value in second. Schedule info. If any playlist is running according to schedule. So its info can be displayed from here. For how long we want to show the graphics, then for this we set the time interval here. How long you want to show it on display. We will set the duration here. From here we can add and remove the composition and can also link to its text. Next Schedule Info Info of the next schedule playlist, which will run after the current schedule, is displayed here. For how long we want to show the graphics, then for this we set the time interval here. How long do you have to show it on display? Then we will set the duration here. 
From here we can add and remove the composition and can also link to its text. Countdown Countdown to any file that runs from playlist. If it is to be displayed on screen, then it can be done from here. By selecting that file, clicking on the countdown button on the dashboard, can display it on the screen. First of all, we are seeing some buttons on this tab. I'll tell you about it. The first button here is cross. We use it to delete all the videos together. The second is the floppy button. We use it to save the playlist. The third button is given sub playlist. We use it to link the playlist with the file. The fourth button is given load playlist. We use it to load playlists. The fifth button is the add video file. We use it to add video files. And the last button is given the update playlist. Use it to update the changes in playlist. If you want to add a file to the running playlist, or you have to remove all files, or save playlists, or link playlists to any file, then use these buttons. If there is a single file or the selected file to be deleted from here then use the keyboard's delete button. Here it shows the information in the video's detail below. This green and blue color play button. It reflects that. Which files are being run at this time? And which ones are going to run after this? In play, time showing time to run the file. In play, date showing file running date. Here is the display of the file duration. Here is display file name and file subname. How many breaks are related from this file? They are displayed here. These are all graphics checkboxes. That makes us realize that which graphics are running on this file? Use it to set file based graphics. This graphic display will remain until the file runs. Here is the display play position, stop position, start mark, end mark, total duration, video information, audio information, format, tracks, path, graphic path and subfile. If any files are to be played immediately then by selecting that file, press the space bar button of the keyboard, or right click on it and use the play selected option. Move up and move down is used to change the file order in the playlist. Select the file and right click on it to use move up and move down button. To remove the file from playlist. You can use the keyboard's delete button. And by right clicking on it. You can also use the delete button. If you want to edit a file in the play out list. Then right click on it and use the edit button. If you have to copy, cut or paste a file from the play out list, then right click on it and use copy cut and paste button. This button is used to remove the schedule tags from the file. If you have to set this condition on a file after it played, so that it will be automatically deleted, then use auto delete button. To remove auto-delete tags, clear auto-delete button is used. If you have to pause at the start frame of a file or at the last frame, then the insert pause button is used. To clear this condition, remove pause buttons are used.
This button is used to remove file-based graphics. If any file needs to be changed file type, or to put a transaction effect between two files, right-click on the file for it and click on the File Settings button. Now I am telling you how to change the file type. Now I am telling you to apply a transition effect. If there are multiple audio tracks given in the file, and you have to set one track from it, so you can do it here. Now I will tell you about breaks. Here we add commercial advertisement. If you have to relate the breaks with a file, then select it and click on the break tab. After that, using the given add break button, select a break and add one by one. From here, we select the desired graphic which we want to run in our break. This function is used to run the graphics. Here are the buttons given on the tab. That's master on off button of the graphics which is used to show and hide the instant graphics from the screen. Here are some buttons on all tabs. Plus buttons is used to add compositions. Cross buttons is used to remove all compositions simultaneously. Use the floppy button to save the work done. Still Graphics and Master Graphics The first function here is the Still Graphics. The graphics that run from here are permanently display on the screen, unless they are manually closed. Thus the composition is added. On air buttons are used to show or hide graphics on the screen. To remove a particular file, the cross buttons are given in its start of the row. Both still and master graphics work in the same way. The difference between the two is just the ordering. Graphics running from still graphics are always on top of the screen. Graphics that run from the master graphics stay behind it. Time play graphics. Graphics are run from time play graphics. Those who have to display at a fixed time. First, you add the composition. After that the switch button is turned on. From here its timing is set. How long is the display on the screen? They set the duration here. From here, you can change the composition's start and end date. The default takes one month state. Loop Graphics 1 and Loop Graphics 2. Both Loop 1 and Loop 2 graphics work in the same way. If we want to display different composition on the same location, so the composition we add here.
This composition will be displayed on screen according to its duration. And then they will be hide. And the second composition will be displayed. In the same way it keeps running in the loop. There are two options to run such graphics, loop 1 and loop 2. L shape. From here we run L band graphics. These are video files. When it run, the screen gets squeezed and the graphics shows in the remaining area. Say it L band graphics. The screen is to be squeezed from the position and it will decide here. How much to reduce the height, it will be set from here. How much width we want to keep, it will set from here. The speed of the screen squeezed is set here. Now I will tell you how L band graphics are played. Now let's add files to it. Here is the switch checkbox in the start. If the graphics have to run according to time, then it is mandatory to check that dot from here, it sets the time to run. If graphics are to be displayed on the screen immediately, then this on near button is used. From here you can change the graphics duration. Graphic state can be changed here. This button that is given here, is used to reload the setting. This function is used to make new lists. Now let me tell you about the buttons on this tab. The first button given is save list as a default list. It is used to make any listed default list. The default list is that, when the software is open, then it load automatically. The second button is load playlist. It is used to load playlists. The next button is add file. It is used to add a video file to the list. Next button is remove playlist. It is used to remove all video files simultaneously. Next button is save playlist. It is used to save playlists. And the last button is Update Playlist. It is used to update the changes made to the list. Now I will tell you to make a list. First you get to add video files. Just add a video file according to the file type. Now we will save it. Similarly we can create multiple lists here. This function is used to schedule the playlist. Playlist to schedule, we will click on the new schedule button. By doing this, a line is added below. A browse button has been provided in this line. From here we add the list. From here we will now set its time and date. 
Click on the start time button to set the time. And click on start date button and set the date. If this line is to be removed, then use the cross button at the beginning of the line. If there is a file running on schedule time, to wait for the running file to finish, this checkbox is used. The delete all button is used to remove all the schedule lines together. Save buttons are used to save the work. The sync button is used to synchronize the running schedule on time. The show schedule buttons are used to view the scheduled list. This can be seen in two ways. First is according to the selected date. Second is altogether. To view by date. Set the date here from date to till date. And click on the show schedule button. To see the complete schedule list together. Check the show all checkbox. These buttons are used to view the schedule list according to day. Use of previous day button to see last day schedule. And today button used to see today schedule. And next day button to see next day schedule. This function is used to run commercial advertisements in a timely manner. Here we are seeing two tabs. First list and second schedule. In the list we add video files of all commercial advertisements. We make their group in schedule and scheduled them. Now let us add the file here. We save this. So this file gets added here. Now let me tell you about some of the buttons here. This button is used to replace files. This button is used to add files into the group. It has the buttons to change the start date and end date. Use this button to see it, which groups are running this file. Now I will tell you how to schedule commercial advertisement. If you have to make group one by one, so by using this button you can do it. For example, I will see you making a group. Now if you have to make a group with a fixed time interval, then you will use this button. For example, I will see you making a group. So in this way we can create a group here. Now we will set the time for these groups. After this we will now add the file into the group. For this we will click on the edit button given in line, which opens a new window. Here are two columns given. We are seeing the advertising list on the right, and blank on the left side. In the center, this arrow button has been given, which is used to add files to the group. I'll tell you how to do it. After adding the files, we will come back to the schedule tab using the back button. Similarly, all the groups go to add files early. Really. 